Ida for walking away from my parents after they told me they're going to adopt my brother's bio sibling. My parents became foster parents after I, 16 meters, was born. They actually adopted three kids from foster care before they decided to stop fostering. At the time my parents said they wanted to focus more on their kids. But really I think they were struggling with four of us and I think near the end fostering became more for the money than anything. As the oldest and their bio kid, so they didn't worry if I felt like I belonged or not, I had to make more sacrifices than my siblings. Stuff for me came last. I got less than my siblings too and gifts were cheaper so they could splurge a little for my siblings. So for Christmas I'd maybe get some clothes and books, and I don't really read, my siblings would get toys and tablets and stuff they loved. For my birthday I'd get a smaller cake and essentials as gifts again. When I was 12 my grandparents bought me a laptop for my birthday and my parents pressured me into giving it up so it could be used as a family computer instead of a personal one just for me. I said no the first time but my parents weren't going to accept it. I don't get to go out with my friends often because my parents don't want use gas driving me and they don't want to give me money to eat or go to a movie or whatever. They also send me to birthdays without a gift for my friends so I have asked my grandparents for money sometimes to buy a gift for my friends. My parents never send my siblings without gifts for their friends. My parents wanted me to get a job, but they wanted me to do that so I could put the money into the household. Since I get the short end of the stick I don't want to add money to make everyone else's lives easier but not mine, and I don't believe it would make my life easier. In October my grade will have the chance to go on the school's interactional trip. We were told about it in February so we can save and get numbers. I pleaded with my parents to find a way to send me. I got my grandparents to help me talk them through it, and they agreed, so they started saving. Then a week ago my parents announced that my younger brother's birth mom is pregnant again and she approached them to do a private adoption so her kids could be raised together. My parents agreed. So they sat us down and told us and mentioned that they had already spent the money saved for the trip. They said things will change for a couple of years but we'll have a new member of the family. I was so pissed and hurt and I just walked out. I walked away from my parents and ignored when they called me back. They were so angry about it and when my grandparents found out they offered to pay for the trip for me, but my parents said they would stop them paying directly and if they give the money to me slash them they will make sure it goes on more important things. They called me childish and petty for walking away like I did. Ida? Ida for refusing to help my wife's family anymore? I, 34 meters, got married 9 years ago to my wife Jessica, 33 F. Jessica and I have two children Robin, 7 F, and Theo, 5 meters. Growing up I didn't have a family. I was a foster kid who was bounced around a lot because sometimes my bio mother would take me back but she'd always end up losing custody again or placing me back. When she finally stopped trying I was 11 and too old for most people who wanted babies or really little kids. So I aged out of the system without being adopted or finding a family. I had hoped when Jessica and I met that I'd be welcomed by her family. But that's not how it went. Took me years to figure it out though. They looked down on me. They're not totally obvious about it but I see it in the way they are with me versus the way they're with the other sons slash daughters-in-law. Like asking them about Christmas plans but saying they didn't expect us to do anything else because I don't have a family. Or asking about the other's jobs and promotions but never me, then acting so shocked both times Jessica or I mentioned I was promoted. There was a time when my sill mentioned a foster kid who won a scholarship to college and it made it into the local news. The whole family's reaction was oh wow a foster kid making it to college is so unexpected and Jessica pointed out I went to college. They looked a little uncomfortable and I heard two of her siblings whisper something about Jessica and that story so I assume they believe she lied about where we met. They don't make an effort for my birthday. They make assumptions that I don't spend time with my kids. They assume any effort made by me is me doing it for Jessica and don't believe me when I say it's not. Yet they will always ask for my help with repairs around the house or assembling something. Because I'm good at that stuff. I have helped Jessica's parents and all her siblings at least twice. Once I realized, with help from therapy, that they really didn't like me and seemed to think less of me for being a foster kid, I did that stuff for Jessica and not for them. But then a few weeks ago Jessica's parents had issues with the stairs. I went and fixed them up. I was hours working on one part and had to go and get extra materials. It was a whole thing. Some of the family came over while I was there and Jessica's parents made food for them. But nothing for me. When I asked them if there was any for me they told me they didn't think I'd want to eat after working so hard. For hours. With no food in between. I told them they didn't think that, they simply didn't want to be polite to me and offer food after doing all that work for them. I was called out by Jessica's parents and her siblings. Jessica took my side as did some of the, the sibling spouses. But I was called out again for not helping fix a shelf for one of Jessica's sisters and saying never again would I help any of them. They said family helps family. I asked them when they ever treat me like family. Ida? Ida for refusing to visit my mill after she fat shamed me following the birth of my baby? I, 26 F, and my husband, 26 meters, just welcomed our first baby a few months ago. Him and I are overjoyed and I am so in love with our tiny bundle. 
My family has been super supportive, bringing us dinners and making sure we had time for napping while we adjusted to parent life. My husband's family is different from mine in a lot of ways. They didn't want to visit us and only wanted us to come to them. They live about 20 minutes away, and didn't really care to offer much for support following the birth. We were fine with it and brought our baby over when we were able to, around three times a month. After the first month, my mill began commenting about how much she prioritized losing the baby weight after she had her first baby. At first I didn't think anything of it. I thought she was just voicing her experience as many people do when they are around babies. She then started commenting on my baby's chubby cheeks, and how similar they are to mine. I felt a bit hurt but let it slide once again. The final straw was when my husband was talking to her casually about my wanting to start going on runs again and how we were planning on making it work since our baby is very attached to me. She very loudly said you're thinking about trying to run? Shouldn't you start with walking? His whole family was in the room and looked at me waiting for my answer. I am an avid runner who only stopped due to my pregnancy, and her comment really hurt. When I was a teenager I had a really bad eating disorder, one that I am still struggling with. Comments on my body or physical abilities are hurtful to hear. And she is someone who I knew talked about people's bodies behind their backs, but I didn't think she would be so mean to my face. I am not skinny by any means, but live a healthy and active lifestyle so weight should not be my concern. This is where I feel like the asshole. I don't want to see her anymore. She makes me feel like crap about myself and my husband is backing me up 100%. His mom is angry because she thinks we are just keeping her grandchild away from her and believes it is unfair. He goes there without me but it is difficult to take our baby because she is exclusively breastfed and refuses bottles of any kind. Ida? Edit. After reading the first few comments I realized that I left out some info. I am currently 5 months postpartum and have been fully cleared by my doctor to begin my running regimen. Ida for telling my sister she's not a kid anymore and needs to stop acting like one because it's getting real old? My parents adopted me and all my siblings. I, 24 meters, have a full biological sister who was placed for adoption at the same time I was. For her it was from birth, me I was too. We were placed in foster care together but it was very difficult for us to be placed together. We're black so that went against us and because we were a set and it was decided early on we'd be placed together. We're the only biologically related siblings in our family. All my other siblings are singletons from their birth families. For me it doesn't matter. I love and am close to all my siblings and my sister is not my favorite or the one I'm closest to. My brother who is basically the same age as me is my favorite if I had to pick but I really love them all. My sister always had more of an issue than me growing up with her identity and she obsessed more over biological relationships. She expected us to be the closest because we're biological siblings. She expected me to be just as interested as her in finding our birth family, which I'm not and never was. I told my parents about it when we were kids and they tried their very best to help her with therapy and fostering open communication and not treating us differently in a negative way. We were all treated different in some ways because we're all different people and had different needs. One thing my sister and I always bickered about was imagining our birth family. She liked to imagine what they were like and what meeting them would be like and she wanted to do this out loud with me and for me to share mine as well. I never did that with her and I told her it was not something I would ever be comfortable doing because I would never want to know them like she wanted to. She hated that and would tell me one day we'd find them together. When it came to her wanting to be my favorite because biologically related, I tried to be more calm and understanding about that. But she's 22 now and she's not a kid. We're both still young but I fully believe we're not kids anymore and I hate that she still puts it on me to choose her over my siblings or that she won't find our birth family alone because I don't want to be a part of that. She brought it up again a few days ago and I lost my temper a little and I told her to grow up because she's not a little kid anymore and she needs to stop acting like she is. I told her she's my sister and I love her but she's not my only sibling and she's never going to be. Then I told her I do not care if our birth family wants to know us. I don't want to know them and I'm not going to ignore that just because she wants to know them. She got so upset. I can tell it kind of shattered her. Ida? Ida for not wanting my sister and her children to move back into our family home? I'm gonna try to keep it short, I only want to focus on the relevant aspects. About a year ago my mother suffered a health crisis and as a result I, 28 am, moved back in with her in order to take care of her. She still has some independence, but I drive her to and from doctors, go shopping for her, help with cleaning, etc. She can wash herself, walk around the house, etc. But not much more than that. My father died a few years back and up until I moved back in she has been living on her own. Very recently my sister, 30F, and her husband, 30M, have separated on bad terms. Don't want to go into details, but it's a fairly hostile situation. My sister has two children 1M and 4M and as a result hasn't worked in quite some time. Now she is in the process of trying to find a job, but with the children that is difficult. Because of this my mother suggested that she should move back in so she could look after the children. I am strongly against this. I feel for my sister, but my mother can't even really look after herself anymore, 
let alone provide childcare for two young children. If she moved in her children would definitely become my responsibility, even though they both deny that, and I can't and don't want to add that to my plate. My sister and mother also argued that my she could help with taking care of my mom, but honestly she wouldn't be much help and it certainly wouldn't make up for the added burden of having an infant and a small child in the home. The house is big enough in terms of rooms for her to move in without a problem, but the fact that all the caretaking duties would inevitably fall onto me is what's making me want to put my foot down. I feel like a complete asshole, but I've considered telling my mother that if my sister moves and I will move out. Ida for not having a gender reveal despite what my mill wanted? I, 23F, and my fiancé, 20 meters, are expecting our first child. We found out I was pregnant early December and announced it to our families on Christmas. Everyone was super excited and supportive till the end of March when it came time to find out the gender of the baby. My fiancé and I decided not to have a gender reveal due to lack of money, space, energy and the fact that this pregnancy hasn't been the easiest for me symptom-wise. We let our families know there would be no grand reveal and that it would just be announced through social media or personal calls. Everyone was okay and accepted that, understanding our reasons. Everyone but my mill. She took it was a personal attack towards her and tried to beg or push us into letting her plan a reveal and that she'd pay for it. We still told her no as I would still have to plan for my family and my dad was working out of town a lot at that time. She since has been very rude to my fiancé and I. We've done what we can to be civil and I've even kept my distance from her. I last saw her when we all got together for Phil's birthday but she refused to say even a work to me. My fiancé still talked to him about it a day or two after and told him that I wasn't handling the situation properly and that Mill was in the right. She said I'm the asshole for depriving Mill of this for her grandchild. Mill also thinks that I solely make this decision to hurt her even though my fiancé has explained that we made this decision together for my health and what I could handle through this time. My friends and family say I'm not the asshole for doing what's best for us but the females in my fiancé family say that I am the asshole. So Ida? Ida for telling my wife I'm not selling my car? My wife and I have been together for 7 years, married for 2, and now we have a toddler together. I've always been the breadwinner in the relationship, I pay the mortgage and bills, and manage our finances. She works part-time to cover some extras, and is our son's primary caregiver. Becoming a mother was her number one life goal, whereas for me it was one of multiple milestones I wanted to achieve in life, alongside having a fulfilling career, traveling to certain places, and the achievement in question here, owning a nice car. Just before we began dating, I bought a classic sports car, fulfilling a big life goal of mine, I've been obsessed with cars and car culture since I could walk and talk. However, once we bought a fixer-upper house together and had a baby, I haven't had the money, time or space to tinker with it or drive it anymore, so the car is currently in storage, not costing us anything. We also own a big family car. Over the last couple of years, my wife has brought up selling the car now and again. She did it again yesterday, only this time, she said that even if I sold the car for a huge profit or we otherwise came into a lot of money somehow she wouldn't expect me to waste money on buying another car for myself. I got annoyed and told her that as a car enthusiast, owning a classic slash sports car was always part of my life plan, long before I met her. I explained that I'd always prioritize keeping a roof over our heads and ensuring we had a good standard of living, but she couldn't tell me to sell my car, nor say I wasn't allowed to tinker and drive it, or buy a different one, when money allowed for it. It then descended into an argument, and we haven't really spoken to each other since yesterday. Ida for getting angry about this? Ida for not defending my daughter to her coach who almost benched her? Quick details. Daughter, 16, is a junior in high school. She has excelled her entire life at volleyball and plays on a prestigious club team in our area. She is currently being scouted by Division I universities. Two weeks ago, her high school had prom. She went, even though I thought she shouldn't. She had an out-of-state tournament that she skipped to go to prom. Other girls on the team skipped their school's prom for this tournament. I told her what I thought she should do but I allowed her to make her own decision and wasn't going to interfere. She had another tournament this past weekend where, unsurprisingly, she barely played. She normally starts and plays most games but she sat on the bench most of the time for this tournament. She told me that she thinks this is unfair, and she is being benched because she went to prom. She wants me to talk to the coach about her decision and make sure it doesn't happen again. I told her what I felt. I flat out told her no I would not talk to her coach. I told her that she is part of a team, and had a commitment to them and she decided to be selfish and go to a silly dance. She argued with me saying how this is a special occurrence. I reminded her two things. One, that other girls on the team prioritize the tournament over their proms. And two, she's lucky to be as talented as she is, and she will most likely not pay for college. This is an opportunity all those prom goers would probably love to have. I warned her this would happen, and she decided not to listen to me. She is still upset with me, I told her I hope she learned something about being part of a team. 
My husband thinks I am wrong because prom is important to a teenager and thinks the coach is being unfair, but I have zero issue with what the coach did. Ida for switching everyone to decaf since they were all drinking my coffee. I live with three roommates and we all try to get along. We are not perfect but we try. I have a pod coffee machine that I like. It uses fully recyclable aluminum pods not plastic. I leave it in the kitchen and I let everyone use it. It wasn't a problem when everyone bought their own pods. Then mine started going missing from my shelf. I asked and none of my roommates admitted to taking them. It stopped for a while. Then it started up again. So I started keeping my pods in my room. All was good in the world. I made the mistake of leaving an unopened box of my pods in the pantry on my shelf. When I went to get it there were five missing. I know it is not a big deal. I know they cost like a dollar each. But it is the principle of the thing. I bought a sleeve of decaf coffee and a sleeve of decaf double espresso. I opened them and left them on my shelf. They slowly disappeared over the week. I bought more. The whole experiment cost me about $40. On Friday I asked everyone if they had taken my coffee if they could please pay me so I could go pick up some more. I pointed to the four empty sleeves of coffee and said I had not had even one of those. So either fess up or I would consider all food in the house fair game until I felt I was even. All three confessed they had borrowed a pot or two since they did not have a machine none of them thought to pick any up. I said that if they each sent me $15 I would pick up four more sleeves and leave them out to share. They each sent me the money. It is the cost of like three cups at a coffee shop. After I got the money I asked if they any requests for the pods. They all said to get whatever had more caffeine. I said that would not be too hard since the sleeves they emptied were decaffeinated. Now they are pissed off that they drank decaf for a week. They were wondering why they had no energy. I just pointed at the sleeve where it clearly says that they are decaf. I suppose they didn't bother looking when they were stealing my coffee. They called me a dick and said that I did it on purpose. They are upset but not in any major way. But they do think I am a jerk for tricking them. One had the gall to jokingly ask for her money back. Ida for snapping at my friend's GF when she wouldn't stop bringing up our past. My family friend Caleb and I made the mistake of dating when we were younger, 16 to 18 on and off. It was a disaster of a relationship that was just a lot of hormones and hurt feelings. It took us a long time afterwards to get to a place where we were friends again and meetings between our families wasn't awkward anymore. But we're there now. I consider him a good friend, not a super close one in the sense we don't really hang out much because we're busy and don't live near each other but I've known him my whole life, there will always be a bond there. Caleb's GF Gretchen is obsessed with the fact that we used to date, and I don't say obsessed lightly, it's the only thing she will reference when we are in the same room. She will bring it up when it has no relevance to the conversation. We, the whole group, will be talking about our favorite holiday destination and she will be like oh did you guys ever go on holiday there while you were together? What does it matter? Or if we are in our hometown she will be like is this where you guys would come on dates? Just, why? She has even asked me incredibly weird things like whether we lost our virginity to each other. I've told Caleb this is beyond creepy and she needs to stop bringing up the past and he agrees, but also said it's pretty normal that she would be curious about it, I don't think this is normal. This past weekend we, my family and Caleb's family, all had dinner because it's Caleb's half-sister's birthday. Gretchen was there and at one point the little girl, she's eight, said I was her favorite cousin and Gretchen said well she could have been your sister if she hadn't dumped your brother. I just lost it. I said something to the effect of why are you so obsessed with the fact that we had a fling nearly a decade ago? You've spent more time talking about this relationship that we spent in it. It's pathetic. What actually is the problem Gretchen? Gretchen didn't say anything, but I demanded she answer the question. Caleb told me to just leave and I said I will leave it when she does. Gretchen called me a bitch which pissed off Caleb's mother and then everyone was bickering. Everyone's got different opinions on what I should have said, whether I should have said anything, timing, etc. But I'm on a character limit so I'll just say it's a pretty even split among several avenues. I just want to know if I was a dick for saying something instead of just putting up with her essentially picking at scar tissue.